Danny Cipriani, who used to see Caroline Flack, has released some last messages that he exchanged with her. Hey guys, it's Murad Morali. Hope you guys are doing well today. If you haven't already, click that button and subscribe to my channel for daily and consistent content no matter where I am in the world. Head over to my Instagram, please, Murad underscore Morali, and subscribe to my podcast, Rate and Review, number six in the UK. Thank you guys so much. So for those of you who don't know who Danny Cipriani is, he is a rugby player, I believe, who, you know, used to see Caroline Flack and date her and got very emotional about how Caroline Flack was kind of suffering. It was very hard for him to do, so you know, kudos for him to be doing that because that in itself, within itself is very difficult. But I don't know about you, but I just do find it a little bit weird that people release their messages and their WhatsApp conversations and their private messages once somebody has passed. Like, I don't understand why there is a need to do it. Like, there's this form of weird sensationalism where you want to release your private messages that you had with that person to the public and I don't understand she here's the only one I feel like Kerry Katona also released private DMs as well Piers Morgan was doing something like that I, I don't really get why people do this um you know when somebody has passed I feel like it just it don't know it just feels a bit weird Danny Cipriani has shared some of his last messages with Caroline Flack, revealing the last star's nickname for him. The rugby star dated Caroline for two months last year and remained close with Flack, messaging Danny the day before she took her own life. The screenshot of the WhatsApp conversation says Caroline wrote, Hello, Black Doll, I'm okay, how are you? Danny replied, Haha, you look gorgeous in your pic. I'm well, navigating my way through an industry, but I'm still being great. And um, why are you just okay? Why are you smiling? says um, Diane Cipriani and then she says well I've got the court case coming up the last message from Flack read well got the court case I'm coming up Danny explained black dot before I start this is my grieving process which is talking a lot with which my friends and family and teammates have had to take the last 10 days because I'm grieving and I'm grieving hard hence I'm talking a lot I'm not sure I'd be strong enough if I didn't understand or see myself in her pain is pain it doesn't matter if you've lost a cat or been called a name no one's pain is, is worse or less True. So a black dot, if you judge the first pick, you see a black dot, but I didn't really know what she meant when she called me a black dot until her best friend told me on Sunday last week. She used to call you black dot, now I know, apparently it's a nickname. I just don't know what, everybody grieves in their own way and you aren't really entitled as an individual to, to tell somebody to grieve properly because you can't say what grieving is. It's subjective, it's an emotional process. But at the same time, I just feel like you can grieve without posting private messages online. Irrespective of how close you are to somebody or whether you're not close to somebody, I don't understand why, like personally speaking, if I knew somebody very, very close to me and they have passed away, I wouldn't release private messages, like, like maybe a, a picture or throwback together cute, but you know, we both voluntarily posted posed for a picture, but I just feel like a private message, would they have wanted that to be released? I don't know. I just find it to be interesting. I genuinely do. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Do you guys disagree? Do you guys agree? Like everybody has their own grieving process. You can't really say that somebody's wrong for doing that. But at the same time, it's an interesting conversation to have. He, within his video, he actually spoke about how um, when he was 22, he attempted to buy a gun to take his own life, but couldn't do it because I had some fight in me, which I exactly understand, I can understand where he's coming from. He said that was something that I went through and have had to, I've had to carry that. She knew everything about me. The reason why I'm staying, um, saying this is, is embarrassment and shame is not something that, I, that should make you do this. So, you know, the video that he did was obviously, you know, very interesting. It was very, very hard for somebody to do so. I, like, I have massive respect for him. To, for him to do so, but uh, you know, a lot of these celebrities, they're post coming out with so many messages in exchange with her, but where were any of you when she was being slated, left, right and center, and if you were friends with her or exes with her, you should have came out in support, but did you want to not be associated with bad press? Like, I don't know, but there is that conversation and food for thought, and I just find it weird when people release conversations and private messages, you know, prior to um, once somebody has passed away. Like, I, I just find that interesting. Like, you could have just said it. You don't have to release it. Like, I don't know. But at the same time, Danny Cipriani basically just reveals some shocking information in this particular video. He does express that she was very, very scared about the court dates. And this was literally 24 hours before she took her own life. And, you know, that was something that was definitely impending on, on her mind. And why wouldn't it be? Because that is definitely a career-changing situation. He also goes on to express that Caroline Flack had to plead guilty to assaulting the boyfriend 
which of course would have led to her career been permanently gone for the rest of her life and that he wasn't able to respond to it because of course he was at a match. So you know she was admitting to him that this is what I have to do in court, I have to plead guilty even though she did express in the later message that it was she was professing that it was an accident, she was saying that she has to um, and plead guilty. And when you do that in court, your career is 100% gone. It's done out, like you will never ever revive back. And we all wanted her to come back for Love Island, but post the court situation, that would have never happened if she was going to plead guilty, which she admitted that she does. So he does reveal also some shocking, interesting information as well. And I just feel like we should all kind of leave this at rest, but how can one leave this at rest when we have prior people keep on coming up with new information, private messages, and they help to regurgitate these narratives, and you're not really letting somebody rest, therefore allowing other people to begin and start and regurgitate conversations because you keep bringing this um, you know, stuff up and releasing private conversations. Let me know what your thoughts are. Please do subscribe, click that button, and I'll catch you guys soon for another video.